The Man in Line with Andy Wint. Fast am I, good afternoon. Welcome to Man in Line this Wednesday lunchtime. The winter solstice, just over seven days away. A week tomorrow, Thursday 21st. The winter solstice will be uh, with us about 10 o'clock the week Thursday night. Then the days will get longer. Not much, but it's something. I want to say thank you to everybody who sent me information about the full Mars yesterday. A lady uh, said, do we have any full Mars at the moment? Uh, these are their tube-nosed seabirds. They are, it's a weird-looking nose they have, but uh, they are, they're very pretty. Uh, for years, says Twitcher, a nesting colony of full Mars reappears uh, to nest on the cliff ledges on the westerly side of Perwick Bay, Fistard. They can be seen clearly from the coastal path between Port St. Mary and Sugarloaf, constantly leaving and returning to their nests during the nesting season. Numbers appear to be about 100, 100 plus, seem to be remaining stable or have done for the past 10 years. Probably many more, I'm sure, more experienced birders than me will be more informative and authoritative on this well-known colony. But uh, that's fantastic. Well done. And also uh, a note in from Carol, who just said in response to the lady's question yesterday regarding the full Mars, I'm delighted to report they've started returning to their nesting place on Marine Drive after disappearing early in July last year. Wonderful to see. Is that uh, fantastic? Well, well, well. If you've got any life, I mean, you don't have to tell me where they are, obviously, but if you've got some live photos, that'd be lovely to see. Andrew dropped a note in on 384. Now we see what uh, the back benches are about. Uh, the uh, This is, uh, oh, you're talking about Stu Peters, John Wannenberg, and the sinister, southern sinister six. Let's not upgrade something to benefit the whole island. Gain votes. This is the uh, story about the upgrading the uh, lighting and sound at the Villa Marina. So uh, £1.6 million is going to be spent uh, upgrades for the Villa Marina and the Gaiety Theatre for sound and lighting technology. Tim will voted in favour of a two-phase project. Apparently the equipment's obsolete, substandard and reliable. So we can guarantee it's going to be going to the auction. A uh, three-year capital works project, I'm not saying it will, which was first promised for five years ago to see the rigging overhauled and the acoustics of both venues improved. This is uh, Julie Edge put this to Tinwald, um, the Minister of Education, Sport and Culture. So there we are. Once it once complete, it's going to ensure that the Isle of Man continues to attract the calibre of singers, bands, comedians and productions that people have become accustomed to as well. Flagship buildings, they are. What do you think about that? Uh, is uh, that worth it, do you think? This time of the year? This time of uh, the financial cycle? Uh, very pretty, of course. Uh, we are, I mean, it's somewhat hampered, and, and certainly some of the free enterprise people who are involved in the concert world uh, sometimes uh, scratch their head. The, the government's involved all, in all our education. The government owns the two big venues on the Isle of Man. Uh, obviously Villa Marina and the Gaiety Theatre so uh, sometimes it's a bit difficult for the uh, the small person shall we say the the free enterprise person to uh, uh, to get in uh, we read this week's examiner about Radcliffe Villas. We had to use the facilities over 20 years ago, at which time it was being talked about the re re replacement respite unit and see the position that we are in now. Well, Holly Dean is going to be upgraded. They are putting money into that. Uh, thank you for that, uh, 361. Uh, but yes, uh, you probably are right. It is a little overdue. Julian's on now. Hi, Julian. Hi, Andy. Um, yeah, I'd just like to comment on an article uh, on the local website, netzero.im. Um, on their webpage, they've got an article titled, Why Geothermal Energy Isn't Viable for the Isle of Man. 
Now, in the article, uh, Clive Callister, who's the owner of the road building company Colas and uh, Alden Construction, and is also the advisor to the Climate Change Board, uh, dismisses geothermal as an energy option for the Isle of Man. And interestingly, on the same web page, if you scroll down a bit, there's a heat map of the UK indicating geothermal hotspots around the UK, with the hotspots are indicated yellow, orange and red, with the cooler or cold uh, spots indicated in green or blue. Um, and with Net Zero Isle of Man's map in mind, uh, a recent statement from the British Geological Survey's top geologist, Timothy Kersey, is particularly interesting. Uh, his latest surveys using the latest 3D mapping techniques, uh, they're pointing to large potential geothermal resources under the East Midlands, Greater Manchester, as well as the Humber and Cheshire regions. And also, I think we've spoken about this recently, the drilling company Sierra Thai has completed drilling a deep geothermal well in Kirby Misperton in North Yorkshire. But what's interesting is all these UK geothermal resources are shown as cool or cold on net zero Isle of Man's map. In fact, Kirby Misperton, that's just had the geothermal well drilled, and the Cheshire region are shown to be colder than the Isle of Man on net zero's map, which makes us potentially even hotter, doesn't it, than the geothermal locations that have got the uh, British Geological Survey um, hot under the collar, you might say. Why do you, why um, do you think nobody's, um, no big company has looked at the Isle of Man and thought it's worth a punt, it's worth, a, uh, w- worth putting a, a, a drill down on the Isle of Man? Well, it may just be that Net Zero's Isle of Man, um, that the, the, the map on their web page is just inaccurate and out of date. Um, you know, when you've got uh, Timothy Kersey from the British Geological Survey saying that these geothermal discoveries are very interesting um, and will provide base load rather than putting up, you know, all sorts of other things that are more, much more intrusive or destructive. Um, you know, perhaps Net Zero needs to take a look at what the British Geological Survey is saying and not sticking with old maps that are showing clearly, um, you know, the Cheshire region has got a big blob of blue on it on Net Zero Isle of Man's um, map. So I think they might be out of date on this one. And if, if we're showing green, it's clearly warmer than than the one in Cheshire or the one in Kirby Misperton, both of which are going for geothermal. So it may well be you can infer that we might be a really good one here. So where do we go from here? Because the whole geothermal thing seems to come up against a brick wall. It, it never gets any further in Timwald or in Keys. There doesn't seem to be. I mean, are you aware of any politician who, who has picked this up and wants to move it forward, Julian? Uh, well, I mean, one or two of them, I think, have, have alluded to the fact that they may not be averse to having somebody over here to actually have a chat that has done them. I mean, somebody like Deutsche Erdwärmer in Germany, um, I mean, they've done 38 in Germany now. Um, I mean, rather than getting consultants in that have no real deep knowledge who are not qualified, it might be get better to just get a company in. You know, if, if you're going to have a boiler in, you just order a boiler, wouldn't you? <laughs> you know, just get a company that's actually done the work, knows what they're doing, and just get them here and say, right, is it doable and how much is it going to cost? And get a quote rather than an estimate. Because these estimates seem to escalate, don't they, these days? Well, everything seems to go up whenever there's money involved, doesn't it? But uh, as we mentioned yesterday, in the middle of it all is the consumer, the person in the street, the one who's paying the bills. And all we want is cheap electricity and free hot water. I mean, that's all anybody wants. So uh, do you think, uh, I mean, as it stands at the moment, and has been mentioned in the past, are we going to be condemned to paying a lot more for our energy? And does that have to be the way? Well, it doesn't have to be the way. I mean, you know, the, 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 the double benefit of geothermal is not only are you getting power out of it, which is, you know, the uh, the the one fifth, which is what the the you know the the, the touted power uh, you know the intermittent power out of um, wind turbines and solar, but you're getting the other four fifths from massive amounts of heat, which is the real big energy that we use. I mean, we use eighty percent of the energy that we spend our money on is 
you know, heating the house. I mean, imagine if you were going to switch to electricity, imagine sticking three bar electric fires on every radiator in your house. Can you imagine what your electricity bills would go like? Um, and then you've got the losses, you know. You, if you've got gas coming in the house, you're burning it at source in the boiler and it's just going round and heating the things. I mean, if you go to electricity, you know, if you live in Cranstall or Port Erin, you know, the electricity is having to be shoved down electricity lines 14, 16 miles. You're getting losses down the line. So, you know, <laughs> you know what I mean? You've got you've got physical losses in sending your energy down cables, whereas if you've got the, the gas locally... Um, you know, you're burning it at source and you're getting a much more efficient way of getting the energy into the room and warming yourself up. I mean, do you think that government is risk averse for something like geothermal in that, you know, they get enough stick about spending three times as much on the Liverpool landing stage and the prom going over and what have you, so that if they, you know, if they shovel a couple of two or three million pounds into a geothermal test drill and it doesn't work, uh, everybody be pointing at them and saying, you know, we told you so. Well, that's interesting. I mean, I think it's mentioned in the Net Zero page that I'm referring to of a, a couple of million for a, for a test bore hole. Um, you know, in, I know it's not a small amount of money to the individual, but, you know, nobody's being held accountable for an £18 million quote for a, for a, um, a ferry terminal that's now looking like it's going to go past £100 million. Um, so, you know, if we can have 24-7, maybe 100 years of energy where we're not spending tens of millions of pounds buying gas in, you know, you've basically got free heat deep underground, um, you'll recover that quite quick. Uh, so, um, I mean, wh you mentioned gas now. I mean, where do you stand on Kroger? What do you think should happen there? It should be done immediately. And I, and I do agree with um, Professor Hubbard that... Um, you know, you need to know whether you're going to get that permeability if you if the gas is going to flow. Um, you know, there's no point in doing all the seismic stuff if you can't actually work out if the stuff is going to rise to the surface or not. So that makes perfect sense and seems to be what the um, the British have been doing for decades and decades and decades. Um, and it seems to make perfect sense to use their their regulatory. Um, text as well you know why would we want to start learning how to do it when they the north sea's been at it for for donkey's years so why not um do a copy and paste on their regulations um and have it here they, they obviously been doing it a lot longer than we have uh, there's also a, a political if you like and a reputational side to this as well we've never drilled for um for resources like that before and if we did do you not think we may get targeted by you know climate change and people like that well with the amounts of money that they're talking about i mean do we care I mean, you know, it, it, this is this is sounding like bullying, isn't it? Yeah. Again, the, I'm just trying to work out what the thinking might be in that, um, you know, the climate activists uh, get up to all sorts of things. And suddenly, if, um, uh, you know, a um, globally insignificant, but occasionally very high profile location like the Isle of Man were to start digging, you know full well this would be all over the papers it would be all over uh, the media that the Isle of, even the Isle of Man is drilling for gas, so we, we become well known for it Yeah, but you know Richie Sunak's uh, issuing loads of permits in the UK for gas exploration um, and it's becoming patently obvious that there is no obvious forthcoming way to get baseload because whenever you ask any politician there's no forthcoming answer as to how do we how do we heat you know with with 80 percent of our energy requirements from from heat energy those wind turbines and they're not providing that energy they're only providing the lights and you know your oven you know when you actually need to heat through a cold winter they're not going to do it so where's that coming from nobody's you know, or, or even the fact, you know, if the wind turbines don't turn, how do you turn your lights on? You know, uh, battery storage, £200 million for five hours to hold the island up. You know, that's a billion a day. We can't afford that. Um, they talk about compressed air storage under caverns, but that's a t in a test phase, and that would be even more mind-bendingly expensive and probably dangerous. Um, 
you've got hydrogen, but you, you lose 80% of the energy in electrolysis producing hydrogen. So, you know, you get the gas out of the ground, you burn it, and it's there. You know, with hydrogen, you've got to make it. It's, it's a bit like a battery that's not particularly efficient either. And as Bonzo said yesterday, horribly leaky. You know, you couldn't put it down existing pipe work, which is why they have to have it in specialist facilities where, you know, the slightest tiny leak in that in any of the joints in the pipe work and you've got a potential bomb on your hands. Uh, which, which is amazing why I hear about them talking about vehicles, you know, hydrogen vehicles. And obviously everybody's mind flashes back to the Hindenburg. And what happened to that? Well, I mean, you know, it wouldn't necessarily be that, but just... You know, even if you think about hydrogen in a vehicle, hydrogen has to be stored at 10,000 PSI. So it has to be held in a very, very thick metal wall tank, which is about seven to nine times heavier than your fuel tank for your petrol. So you're dragging around all that extra weight. And if you try to tune a hydrogen engine, an internal combustion engine with hydrogen in, when you start to lean it off um, to get it to, say, to, I don't know, 30 to the gallon or whatever you start producing more sulfur dioxide than a petrol engine does. So unless you're prepared to get about five to the gallon and have water coming out the tailpipe only, that's why uh, the Honda Clarity, um, for example, the hydrogen test bed that they've had going for a long time from Honda, it's never actually got off the ground because you can't lean the engine off without causing chemical side effects which are worse than what you're trying to stop okay all right julian i appreciate it thanks for calling today thanks andy cheers good to hear from you the activists couldn't afford the ferry here <laughs> says chris so that's one thing the steam packet will do is keep keep activists away thanks for that um and a, a message in that just says um Uh, Oh, this is regarding geothermal. So is the reason that geothermal isn't being looked at on the island is because there aren't any backhanders, says Frank. Now, Frank, you can't say something like that without having verifiable written proof. Okay, We all understand, Frank, but you really can't say things like that. And if you do know something like that, then you must report that to the police and not just, you know, willy-nilly write things like that. Anyway, it's on record. Thank you, Frank. The £1.7 million now to be spent on acoustics and lighting is the result of another mess left over from the original build. The sound system, this is Villa Marina we're talking about, I presume, has always been really poor since the refurbishment, so this is another add-on needed due to a poor original specification from government, says Paul. Does anybody know, says Texter 475, about the travel certificates needed for pets to travel? travel to Ireland. Are passengers being stopped if they take a pet to Ireland? Text to 475. If you're going to Ireland, could you uh, tell us about this? Um, thanks also to uh, this is Vivian, who just said she sent a message in yesterday asking about Kroger and what's happening with Kroger. Well, at the moment, nothing, to be quite honest. The infrastructure minister is deciding whether, this is, that's Mr. Crookall, is deciding whether the company hoping to search for gas in Manx Waters should be allowed to drill what they call an appraisal well without first carrying out a 3D seismic survey. Kroger's seeking a variation to the gas exploration license that they've had, OK? They don't want to do a 3D survey. They want to do a test drill, an appraisal well out. Now, the chief exec of Kroger is Richard Hubbard. The recent meeting we had at the beginning of December, um, we've been through all the detail of what they're doing with them, and the DOI have appointed some external industry experts to help them with the technical stuff. Why shoot? Why seismic? Why drill wells? And they all said, well, in this case, the right thing to do is drill a well. So that was comforting. And the DOI has also appointed some legal advisory to try and help them understand how best the Isle of Man can use the UK regulations, or if they really have to, put their own in place. But clearly we're hoping that the legal advice will 
send them towards uh, using the Petroleum Act as an order to extend the law to the UK. What we've done with, with the DOI is agree that we'll have a regular monthly meeting, which is kind of essential when you're running into an operational timetable. So our next meeting is at the beginning of January. And the person who will make this decision is the minister of the DOI, Mr. Crookall. So he has not reached his decision yet. So we, we are hoping that perhaps by the time of the next meeting that the minister may have been given all the information he needs to allow him to reach his decision. And if it's positive, of course, it will be to issue what the DOI calls a variation of work program, which allows Kroger to drill the first appraisal well before acquiring the 3D seismic survey. What do you think about this? Do you think, I mean, we've been... How can I put this gently? Faffing around with this for a long time. Is the gas there? Isn't it good? They say the gas is there. They say they can get it out and it will benefit the Isle of Man to billions, billions of pounds. And that's one thing we're short of at the moment. Billions of pounds. So is can you tell me, do you have a view on this? I mean, are you, are you firmly against the idea of drilling for fossil fuels? And is that just because it's the Isle of Man? Because everybody else is doing it. Ireland's doing it. They're putting a, a well down off Waterford in Ireland. Everybody else around the world is taking advantage of their fossil fuel reserves. So is there a reason that we shouldn't do it? And if there is, could you tell me? Why do uh, the government follow the UK only when it suits them? The UK continues to give £300 cost of living. I've got a small pension. I'm struggling to eat or heat. Government should give the cost of living to all on pensions and benefits, not just people who are on income support who get everything, but leaving many to struggle on quietly. It's going to be a happy Christmas, but a cold one. So I'm sorry to hear that, Anne. Oh, I know. And if there's something that affects you at the moment, um, the, the, the bonus is being given to people on income support at the moment, not to everybody on a pension and benefits. So it is targeted where that's concerned. All the best for you. Um, uh, Mr. Allison asked Tinwolf for the money. Get your facts right, facts right, said Andrew. Well, he did. However, Miss Edge, who is Education, Sport and Culture, said it was a good idea, which was the point. It's Bonzo now. Hi, Bonzo. Hello. Yes, I was just listening to the uh, excerpt from uh, Perspective with Richard Hubbard, Chief Executive of Kroger, on Sunday. Um, I must admit, I found the entire programme, um, well, not so much illuminating as um, disturbing. It was rather like the Martin Bashir uh, interview of Diana. It was. I don't know how Phil Gorn could have been more fawning. To, uh, to Richard Hubbard, and, of course, not mentioning some very key questions, such as Mr Hubbard's uh, fitness to actually be uh, a chief executive or director um, of such an enterprise, given the fact that he was indicted uh, in Norway for his role in bribery and corruption and sanctions busting, uh, we, when he was part of Statoil, uh, the Norwegian oil company, uh, in um, um, uh, enabling uh, supply of oil from Iran. Now, um, that was then continued by a, uh, um, by a case in America, I think, and um, the... Um, SEC and uh, Department of Justice, I think, don't have him as a uh, as a fit and proper person uh, because of that as well, um, which might have explained why he spent 16 days as director of a uh, company in Switzerland. Um, obviously, the due diligence arrived back, and they were possibly not uh, not very pleased. I mean, these facts are all documented, by the way. You can find uh, them anywhere I mean, on the you, internet, and indeed, uh, yeah. I have sent them. No, no, you, you're, you know. quite, you're quite right, Bonzo, but uh, the government doesn't seem to think that's any sort of a barrier, nor obviously do the other directors and shareholders of Kroger. They don't seem to think that's a problem. They're just looking uh, uh, at his experience. <laughs> well, um, 
you know, words fail me. Um, that simply isn't what... Uh, certainly in UK, I doubt he'd be deemed as a fit and proper person to be a company director. And we, uh, we aren't dealing with this person. Oh, also, of course, Kroger, we're talking about varying their license, that they still haven't paid their subs for. And that was uh, revealed in answer to a question, um, and it was revealed by Tim Crookle um, in Keys, I think it was. In response to in response to a Keys question that they had not, that they had not paid this year's fee for the license, which I think is something like about seven and a half thousand pounds, they hadn't paid, which is due, you know, sort of first of January every year. They still haven't paid it, so it's almost a year, and they still haven't paid for their license. Why should they still hold it? So, I mean, are you against anybody going for that gas or just them? Um, I'm pretty much against anyone going for that gas because, of course, it is a stranded asset. I don't know if anyone's been watching, but we've just had an agreement at COP28. And one of those agreements is the uh, running down of uh, fossil fuel consumption. Uh, so that's going to going to happen. It is actually in the text of the agreement. So uh, people can issue these exploration licenses as much as they like. Um, that, <laughs> no, that uh, that will not be looked at. And if it was such a marvellous investment, well, why haven't Kroger got their thirty two million pounds uh, for exploratory drilling yet? You would have thought people would be queuing up. If that was the case, going shut up and take my money. And so why, why aren't they? Why are other people drilling for gas and oil around the world then? Why, why is there... I mean, lots of people are putting down wells here, there and everywhere, Bonzo. Well, they're going to find themselves in a bit of a, bit of a pickle. <laughs> um, people, of course, made that decision via the, uh, the circumstances of the Ukraine war and the cessation of gas supplies from Russia. Um, so that led to, right, fine, everyone, we've got to find some alternative sources, get drilling. Yeah. But um, those um, issues, I think, will, will um, or are indeed, you know, are changing as people see the need for the consumption of fossil fuels to reduce, and that reduction is now in a treaty. And that is now in a treaty which actually via our... Um, via our inclusion in the uh, Paris Agreement, if I remember rightly, that we are obliged to uh, to, to participate in. So, uh, ju- just let me uh, let me put this to you then. Where do we go for base load? Everybody talks about base load in when when the wind doesn't blow for our wind turbines. What do we do about that? Uh, in the interim, yes, this will still have to be um, fossil gas probably for the next five years, let's say. Um, After that, um, we can examine other options. Now, when we're talking about battery storage of renewable power, we're not talking about big Tesla walls. That's one thing you can do. Another thing is that you can have a giant weight (laughs) that's down a mine shaft, and that that gets pulled up by the... uh, you know, by energy when the wind is blowing, the excess from that is, is then used to pull up very big weight, and then it's dropped down again to uh, generate electricity. So there are, there are all sorts of um, kinetic. There's another thing I think that uh, ABB are developing, which is a flywheel, very very big, um, sort of about 20 foot across flywheel that can contain about two or three megawatts of of energy, and then release that uh, on demand. So. There are a variety of ways of doing this rather than thinking that it all has to be batteries. But another thing as well, um, electric car batteries, when they come to the end of their life as electric car batteries, they still have lots and lots of life in them. Um, They can still retain something like 90% of their charge. And so there is a growing market for those things in storage walls. Um, So the idea of the recycling of all the problem of... um, toxic materials in electric battery, electric car batteries that a lot of people discuss. Um, well, that's, again, another specious argument because they can be used in order to, to help reduce the, uh, the use of fossil fuels. So, uh, 
again, it, it, when people talk about the green agenda um, and green in, green interests, um, the World Economic Forum being behind them or something, nobody seems to want to talk about the fossil fuel industry's interest. Nobody wants to talk about the fact that uh, fossil fuel industry has been uh, for many years uh, fun, funding lo- with lots of money um, climate change denying organisations. So where do we go? Where do we go from here? What does it? What does this mean to the person in the street? Who? I'll I'll just put this to you. I'll venture to suggest the person in the street doesn't actually care where their electricity comes from. They just want cheap electricity to live their life by. Yeah, and that's what the wind array um, and, and and other measures will do over time. But the first thing it will do when the the Uh, wind farm comes into operation is that it it will enable prices not to go up anymore. And then, as the uh, cost is then then covered and the return on that uh, investment will take, was it four years, I think they're told, uh, possibly less than four years, then those savings can get passed Um, more greatly into uh, the pricing of electricity. So the price of electricity can come down. That's the whole point of it. I I, I know that there are people who who, uh, look at the green agenda and go, oh, it's all these holier-than-thou people who want us to sort of go back to to, um, living in caves or something. Uh, No, not at all. But and we understand that the, the the argument. Yes, there is a moral argument, but there's an economic argument, and it's a huge, great, big economic argument. Okay, all right, Bonzo, we appreciate that. Thanks for calling. Okay, then cheers. Bye. Good to hear from you. Uh, here's a message in that said, uh, "I think they should drill the hole for the gas. If they want to pay for it, let them crack on. We need to explore all options. We can't rely on wind because it doesn't blow all the time, even though it feels like it." And uh, that's a WhatsApper. Three five nine, but also Eric said we need to give Kroger the go-ahead. It's no cost to the taxpayer. This will then fund our long-awaited renewables project to get us net zero, even with Kroger gas extraction. If we don't take it, then the UK will, says Eric. Crikey, yes. I predict that the gas will be declared a green energy source, hopefully before I die, says 311. Oh, if you know how to get to the bottom of this, then please tell us. We're trying to find out. At ShopRite, we're slicing over a third off Balakashig Farms Manx meat with our festival. Super 6. Manx Carvery Bone-In Rib Beef, £6 per pound. Boneless Rib, just £7 per pound. Manx Silverside Joints, £3.50 per pound. Sirloin at £7.50 per pound. Fillet Steaks and Joints, £12.75 per pound. At these prices, a Sunday roast can be any day you choose. Stock the freezer, and today's great value will look even better after Christmas. The All Manx Festive Super 6. Only at ShopRite. On the third day of Christmas, my true love bought for us three augers, two tap hole basins, and a Haldane Fisher bathroom. Haldane Fisher for paint, timber, power tools and screws. Plus bathroom suites, a fantastic choice of doors and much more. For friendly, expert advice and great service, call Haldane Fisher Ramsey on 815441 or Douglas on 624466. You'll find everything you need to improve your home at Haldane Fisher. See online or visit your nearest branch in Douglas or Ramsey. No matter how much you need to dig... Or how much you want to dump. Fox Group Isle of Man offer an extensive range of plant hire, long-term lease and sales. We're the island's exclusive supplier for Louis Gong excavators with immediate delivery. Our machinery comes with a complete service package with finance plan options. Call John on 458946 to discuss your plant needs. Fox Group Isle of Man, part of the Fox Group of Companies. Mom, Dad, there's no hot water again. Having trouble with hot water and heating? Energy prices are rocketing, and there's never been a more important time to make sure your heating system is in tip-top condition. Home Warm by Energy Management Systems is the simple way to spread the cost for essential maintenance, starting from just $7.99 per month. For peace of mind and money-saving advice, call EMS on 613210 or find us on Facebook. Home Warm by EMS. Become 
our priority. This festive season on the Nation Station, the winning continues with Manx Radio's 12 Days of Christmas. Between now and Christmas Eve, we have a huge prize to give away every day, including return Logan Air flights to London City, a £100 Ellen Van and Fuels voucher and a hamper from ShopRite. All you need to do is listen for your cue to call and join us live on the air to answer a simple seasonal question. Manx Radio's 12 Days of Christmas. Brought to you by SpectrumWindows.im And it all starts today. The Man in Line with Andy Wint. Thank you, G on the 313. Note, electricity is going up by 1.5p. Well, it is in April anyway. We'll be green because nobody can afford the prices. <laughs> that. And thanks to, uh, um, let me see, lots of people talking about... Uh, why do you allow people on the air? Well... I don't know whether you've listened to Man in Line before. This is a, a text. I won't... Uh, anonymous, shall we say. Just says, why do you allow people on the air to spout their nonsense? Uh, I don't know whether you know this, but Man in Line is an opinion programme. And if honestly held opinion is what we're about. So if somebody wants to come on and give their opinion, as I said, as long as you keep a civil tongue in your head and don't contravene any laws, then that's absolutely fine. And... If you think, if you disagree with somebody else's opinion, there's a really simple way to, to counter that. And it's not to send me messages saying, why do you allow other people on? It's to call, like Eddie. Hi, Eddie. Hi, are you all right? Yeah, yeah. good. <laughs> Unusual comment, that, wasn't it? <laughs> well, I'll, I'll be honest with you, Eddie. We get it all. I think it's people who don't haven't listened to Man in Line before, and they happen upon us and just say, these people pretend they're experts. No, That's it's right. it's yeah. an opinion. Yeah, and thank you for allowing me to give him my thoughts every day for the uh, wind turbines. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yesterday I spoke about the bolster, the cut down of the forest and everything. Uh, today's thought is, uh, if they do go ahead with them, uh, apart from the infrastructure and everything that's inevitably going to cost a lot of money, when once they get there and start erecting these things, they're going to cut down... Uh, more or less all of the forest uh, most of the heathland will go there will be 400,000 tonnes of concrete for the five bases because they take uh, I think it's 80,000 tonnes each 80,000 um, tonnes? each yeah well you've got to hold a massive turbine up haven't you so to stabilise it at the bottom it needs 80,000 tonnes of concrete believe it or not Crikey. Well, anyway, what I was going to suggest is this. Um, we have vis- uh, video evidence of what cutting 50 trees down can do. And imagine if we took away all the heathland, which is our usual sponge for all the water to slow it down. If we take that away and the forest, all those roots do exactly the same. How often have you seen on the television about when they cut down in Venezuela, Brazil and everything? The minute they've they've bared the land, they get floods. They get um, avalanches, floods, everything, you name it. Well, we've already experienced the floods here in Ronag. So imagine what will happen if all of that heathland goes and all the forest goes and we've got five pads of concrete the water has got to come back down again so we've already seen what it'll do so there's your thought for today floods i'll guarantee you that it will cause floods everybody knows it up here because we've seen what happens when somebody interferes with the land so there's your thought for today all right thanks eddie Okay, pleasure. Good to hear from you. 039 says, uh, Andy, it's the green civil servants who are pushing windmills, wind turbines, yes, and stopping gas and geothermal. So I think the green activists are already here. Says that texter on 039. And D and Peel says, I agree with Eric. And Andy says, uh, why don't we talk about tidal flow energy? Well, I think we talked about that a while ago, didn't we? And the fact that um, uh, we don't have... It just doesn't really seem to be working anywhere, does it? Those uh, ducks that don't see... Well, anyway, uh, I'm not against gas drilling exploration, says Jeff, still sitting on the fence over a sister dying. But my point 
is like with the personal history of the chief exec, why does the Isle of Man always seem to do things through the back door and leave themselves open to criticism? Why can't we do things right in a reputable way of criticism? Just my thoughts, says Jeff. Uh, Thank you for those. And a message just to say, this is just going to cost money in the future. This, um, how much money can we get? I've always, I've always said that, uh, you know, people have got investments. (laughs) Everybody always wants to know who's got money in something, don't they? Do you think we should do that? A a statute of um, declaration of interest. What's your money in? Oh, we'll be here all day. Um, so let's, uh, Ian just said, I'm getting a bit tired of the same people arguing over what we all should be doing. Let's be perfectly honest. If they discovered oil under the Isle of Man, most people would say drill for it. If it's going to benefit the Isle of Man and make our heating and driving costs cheaper, regardless of what other political bodies and countries and individuals say, cheers, 817, Ian for that. I'll give you the, the other hypothetical. Uh, let's just say we haven't struck oil. Let's just say that our heavy metals that we used to mine you know, a couple of hundred years ago, this was a hotbed. It really was a hotbed for 40% of the lead mined in the British Isles came from the Isle of Man. Let's just say they put a test bore down and it ended up Balajora or Mackled, wherever, or Foxdale or in Laxey and hit lithium. Now, lithium is very much needed nowadays. If we hit lithium... Do you think that's something that we should take advantage of? I'm not saying lithium is equal to the gas, but is it just the principle that you don't like? Because a lithium mine will make a real mess of the Laxey Valley, and the hundreds of thousands of tourists going up on the Snaefell Mountain Railway wouldn't really take kindly to that, would you think? But lithium is core to what's going to happen in the world regarding batteries. So is it just because it's gas or anything? Also, I note, it was 1951, I think 51 or 52, that somebody took a a sample of some spoil from Laxey. It was in London. They went by and accidentally took it by a Geiger counter and found there was uranium in it. Not much, but there was uranium in that. Now... If we hit uranium, what would you say then? The Man in Line. Daily interaction, debate and exchange of ideas. Broadcast on Manx Radio. Find a hidden gem in the Isle of Man. The Abbey Restaurant Balasala. This old country house offers a relaxed and sophisticated atmosphere where you can wind down with unique and interesting fresh food and drinks. From dinner with fine wines to tea and exquisite cakes. Enjoy our fantastic lunch menu with fresh specials or join us for afternoon tea and dinner. To book, click the abbey.im, find the Abbey on Facebook or call 822-393. Island Hearing Limited, your local hearing care specialist since 2009 with branches in Port Erin and Ramsey. We provide the very latest hearing aid technology available, which you can try at home, with excellent aftercare and a wax removal service available using microsuction. Give us a ring on 830 722 or visit Island Hearing at One Station Road, Port Erin. We're happy to help. Island Hearing, always listening. Construction ways today. Tells recycle for another day. A builder's skip or two. Tells skip for bringing you. From cardboard to green waste. Tells recycle for another day. Metals and plastics too. Tells skips are right for you. Skips are what they do. We're the guys that hire one to you. Call Tell Skips today. 677137. Ho ho ho! Happy Christmas! This Saturday and Sunday, the Groundle Glen Railway Santa Train is running direct services from Groundle Beach to Santa's Grotto. This year, you need to book in advance online at ggr.org.uk. The Groundle Glen Railway Santa Train, supported by Manx Radio. The previous message was brought to you by QVH, the island's premier serviced offices and co-working space in the heart of Douglas. 
Call 639-940 for more information or visit qvhpremieroffice.com. Manx Radio and Orchard Recruitment are playing Santa this Christmas, so get your business on our nice list. For the next two weeks, the elves will be out delivering festive cheer and delicious mince pies to workplaces across the island. Nominate your company or department at manxradio.com and we could be sliding down your chimney. Workplace mince pies with your nation station Manx Radio and and Orchard Recruitment, a refreshing change. The Man in Line with Andy Wint. And thanks to everybody telling me where the full Mars are. Really appreciate it. Nick says, Andy, carbon dioxide and water vapour are the only byproducts of burning natural gas and CO2 isn't at crisis levels in our atmosphere, not even close. The science shows this. Uh, says Nick, unless you're a scientist that relies on funding from the World Economic Forum. You know, at some point, this will all be behind us. <laughs> at some point, we won't be talking about the green agenda, sustainable fuels, renewables and wind turbines. We don't. We'll, at some point, we will get our lives back. Do you think it's possible that the government is opposed to geothermal because being cheaper and possibly privately run, they're afraid of it compromising their ability to repay the massive debt that they still have? Just a thought, says Graham. And a a message also from... This was from... uh, Was it Nigel or was it this... uh, I've got you. Here we are. Oh, Oh, more information about the full Mars. The full Mars are very, a very hot topic at the moment. Uh, and uh, let me see. Here you go. Uh, regarding Kroger, why is it formed as a 2000 Act company that hides who its local shareholders are? Why isn't it transparent filing public shareholder documents as a 1931 Act public company would do, says Andy. Andy, don't know. If anybody does, by all means, tell us. I think the uranium is too close to um, uh, the Wokies as well. So I am an expert of nothing and, um, and nobody, and I'm proud of it. I don't have any certificates behind my name. Thank you for that. Hark back to when the Alaman delegates went to China to attract business. Nothing happened, but the Chinese will be here quick enough if we had lithium, says G. Don't say that. Donald, a former well specialist, says, allow Kroger to drill and test the well. So what do you think? Is this what you think should happen with Kroger? So, uh, 011 says, why don't you change the name of the man in line to the geothermal show? That's all you seem to like uh, talking about. (laughs) I've got news for you, 011. It's not me. It's the people that call in. I don't know whether you've come to that conclusion yet. It's the people that call in that talk about it. Yeah, it's an opinion program. It's an open line program. But, I mean, if you want to call 011, then by all means, let's let's know what you think. A referendum is required before the Isle of Man government spends millions. Well, all of this we can talk about on Friday. Well, I mean, tomorrow you can talk about it because we're open line tomorrow. And uh, you can have your say tomorrow. But on Friday, the chief minister is here. Alfred Cannon, MHK, is on Man in Line on Friday to talk about, well, really, what what sort of year we've had, what we are looking forward to. Alfred Cannon on Friday for Man in Line. If you want to call, by all means, take your uh, chances on the day. Or in the meantime, you can call the answer phone on 682631 or you can email maninline at manxradio.com. To Alfred Cannon on Friday. Next Monday, Chief Exec of Manx Care is going to be on now. Manx Care affects everybody. Health and social care. There are many strands to it, and we always get absolutely full of callers and questions for Teresa Cope. So if you want to get a question in for Teresa Cope, by all means do. So Alfred Cannon, Chief Minister on Friday. Teresa Cope. Chief Exec of Mangscare is going to be with us on Monday, if that's something you want to talk about. Uh, more, oh cracky, everybody's sending me information about the full Mars. I'm very happy about this, and if we can, maybe we'll get a full Mar in the studio, you never know, do you? And, and also uh, a message in from Dennis, who just said, who are the people who are taking stamps? The Manx Eating Disorder Support People, 330922. 330922, speak to Georgie, they're taking you stamps uh, to raise money for the Manx Eating Disorder Support. And And uh, Terry just said as well, um, 
is it true that the stamps are going up? Yes, they are. 85p they're going up to, but it is in the new year, 8th of January. So if you've got your 80p ones, you know what's going to happen. At the moment in the UK, I mean, that 85p is a lot, but in the UK, it's £1.25. £1.25 for a first class letter rate in the UK. One twenty five, and we're a me eighty a mere eighty five P. If somebody told you years ago you would be paying seventeen shillings to send to send a letter, seventeen eighty five P. Heavens above. What do we do about that? Uh, thanks also to, oh thanks to uh, Ben Hartley who's been on the phones today and also thanks to you for getting in touch remember an open line is driven by you and if you're listening to Man in Line maybe for the first time haven't listened for a while or dis- just discovering us then down to you you call you text you email you whatsapp you can even write to me very happy to get letters. Real old school. Thanks also to uh, Col- was it Colin. It's Colin, wasn't it? Who just said um, uh, that department, that development that's going in on in the heart of Ramsey, I think should absolutely go ahead. Ramsey needs more money spending on it. It's great, but Ramsey can get even greater. Thank you. Back tomorrow, high noon. W-I-N-T. Merry Christmas from everyone at Doom School.